Grail, New Jersey. The name of the game, Yellowfin Tuna. However, inclement weather has given us just a five hour weather window at best to make it happen. I'm with Ryan, the Jersey Kid DeGraw. Can we pull this off? Stay tuned and find out. George Vovaromo's world of saltwater fishing. Big fish don't stand a chance. So here we were, 2.30 in the morning at the Brielle Yacht Club Marina, had the Mark 6 up for one of our New Jersey shoots. I was thoroughly excited, even though we were getting set to leave around three o'clock in the morning to make a dark run out to a spot that was about 41 to 42 miles offshore. It was in August, and the goal was to try to get to some of these inshore lumps to try to get on the yellowfin tuna bite, and in a perfect scenario, get them on topwater plugs as well as jigs. And riding shotgun with me, I like to call him the Jersey Kid, Ryan DeGraw. So I'm 22 years old. I grew up right here in this area. I've been fishing since as long as I can remember, pretty much. I started off with, you know, just a normal fluke, sea bass, bluefish, striper thing around here. And then uh, as time went on, I kind of graduated up to the tuna stuff. And ever since I started, I just haven't been able to stop. Now my history with Ryan goes back, even though he is about a 21 year old kid, a number of years ago with our Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series, we had a seminar set to go in the New Jersey area and a big snowstorm was headed in that weekend. I actually flew out on a Wednesday to beat the snowstorm in because our setup day was Friday, the seminar is on a Saturday, and lo and behold, as luck would have it, the snow started coming in hard. The production team, they were stuck. Their flight was canceled. Long story short, here comes Ryan and his mother to the seminar hall on that Friday, packed 400 some odd buckets, helped get the screens all set up, and my luck was changing because late that night, the production team came in, we were able to get the equipment up, and we had one heck of a show, thanks to Ryan. We own that seminar. We would have lost that seminar had it not been for his help. So my mom actually had reached out to George and set up a little fishing trip. It would look like it was a kid opening presents at Christmas. We got him in the Mark VI, we took him out, showed him a great day of fishing in appreciation for what he did going way back to saving that seminar series for us. Watching Ryan grow up, he's a fishing fanatic. That's all he wants to do. And that really inspired me a number of years later to say, hey, I'm gonna bring him on board as a faculty at one of our Saltwater Sportsman National Seminar Series that we held in Atlantic City. Yeah, so I was honored when George reached out to me and asked me to speak at the seminar. It was a really, um, it was a really cool experience for me, especially not really doing anything like that before. Uh, I had a great time. He did a brilliant job up there, the young gun. That's why I nicknamed him Ryan, the Jersey Kid, DeGraw. And the following year, the 2021 seminar series, when the series went on television, we invited him to be a participant there too. So this was the history that I had with Ryan, and it sort of ended up on us coming up to do this trip together. And I said, it's gonna be a great time fishing with the Jersey Kid. Let's see how luck would have it. So here we are in the darkness, we're leaving uh, Brielle Yacht Club Marina, and you're living off your Simrad radar. You're dimming all the lights in the boat to make sure that you have your best visibility. You have your Simrad electronics all dialed in with your bearing away points so you could run your spot. And it's all eyes watching in front of that boat and watching and living by that Simrad radar. Made our way up in that Jersey darkness, and uh, sure enough, before the sun came up, we were on top of the mound. We're marking sand eels. We see whales. Oh, that scared the bejesus out of me. Porpoise. We're marking some of the yellowfin tuna. I mean, it was looking so good. I was ready to knock this one out of the ballpark. Uh, growing up watching George, you know, I never in a million years thought that it would come to even getting to meet him, never mind do two seminars and now a TV show with him. But uh, it's truly a blessing, and I look forward to everything that uh, might happen down the line. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Penn, let the battle begin. Mako, you'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. George, we'll be right back. 
We'll be back with Ryan in just a few, but first, my history in New Jersey waters runs deep. In addition to trips for features in Saltwater Sportsman magazine, I filmed several television episodes here. Examples of these include canyon trips, one of which Joe Trainer, Trey Ryan and I trolled for yellowfin tuna, and then spent the evening fishing for mako sharks. There he is. I see color. Bring it up, it's getting closer, and here comes Trey. Gets a good okay. shot, hits it. We have yellowfin tuna, number one in the boat, and it just was a great feeling. I was uh, quick enough with the gaff <laughs> not to miss and put him in the boat. First yellowfin of the day, how about yeah. that? And it really Bring felt great to have the first yellowfin of the trip aboard the low profile. Dinner. Yeah, it is, Trey. <laughs> good job, Joe. Yeah, how about that? George, you got a mako? Got a mako. Coming up to the top right here, here we come. We had a little mako there, guys, look at it, huh? And fortunately, it was my rod that went down. We had a mako shark, beautiful shark. To see the electric blues in this fish, just the, the, the pointy snout and just the teeth is really mesmerizing. It's just an unbelievable top predator here. Then, there's the Cape May fluke trip with Adam Krauthamel. Pretty good one there, George. Oh, and see him spit that, that yeah. sardine out there? Yep. All right, let me know when you're ready, George. He looks like he, this one looks like he's well hooked on the He's well hooked, yeah. You could probably flip him in. If... You're not going to mess up my dinner, are you? No, I'm good. You I make got a this. count? You just bring him within range. I'll get him. Oh, I'll get him in range. I'll get him for you. There you go. Nice fish, George. There you go. That's a nice three pounder. That, huh? Watch that trailer hook. You're good. That's a nice fish there. And a Barnegat Lightweight Bluefish. I'm seeing some, I'm seeing a leader coming up, it looks like. It might be your job here in the net soon. Yeah. Now I see some color coming up in the back. Now it's a big bluefish. Ah. It's a sizable bluefish, though. Here, it's all yours. All right. Look at this. Look at the size of that thing. But it had been one of the biggest bluefish I've ever seen. And trophy bass with Steve Perel. There you go, Steve. You got him? Yep. And I'm up here in New Jersey. I sort of felt, well, you know what? I borrowed this fish from the people in New Jersey. And I'm gonna release that and let somebody else from New Jersey catch this fish. It's a bad, oh my God. <laughs> Let's get in the water. And before my trip with Ryan DeGraw, we had the Mark 6 up in Atlantic City to target trophy stripers with Tom Daffin. We absolutely crushed them, including loading up all five trolling outfits in one pass. Five on, five on, yeah. Yeah, five on. Oh, yeah. This is all your problem. I'm gonna go have a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> this is This wow. is it. So five rods down, we still end up releasing five big striped bass. Not bad, huh? There was some pretty exciting topwater action too. Again, these are just a sampling of my trips here and the awesome fishing New Jersey has to offer. Now stay put, I'll be right back to chasing elephant tuna with Ryan DeGraw out of Brielle, New Jersey. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Simrad, 75 years of innovation in marine electronics. Rapala holds the world record for world records. Suffix, always use the best line. Starbright Boat Care Products, clean and protect. George, we'll be right back. The Riel Yacht Club Marina hosted us and the Mark VI. This facility is truly impressive first class and right by the inlet. And who better to tell you about the place than its owner, Tom Fletcher. The Brielle Yacht Club has been here forever. It's a very famous place. Many famous boats have fished out of here. As you can see, we're very close to the inlet. Brielle Yacht Club Marina, state of the art facility. We have in excess of over 200 slips, deep water slips, fuel, all services, right here, Manasquan Inlet, Brielle, New Jersey. When we started to drop jigs for the elephants around the whales and the porpoise, we worked those poppers and we worked those jigs so hard, staying with the mammals. We would mark fish, we'd shut down, and it was just knowing that we had this small window, we were fishing, literally fishing our arms off. 
and we would fish different uh, mounds. Uh, we would make drifts over them. We would mark the fish and try to drop down. But for whatever reason, when we did see the marks, we could not buy a strike on either the jigs or the poppers. And occasionally we'd throw out a net full of the peanut bunker to try to chum those tuna up to the top. And lo and behold, even chum in with the peanut bunker, which had been like magic in this fishery, it wasn't working for us. So Ryan said, okay, I think we need to go ahead. It, it's starting to get a little later in the morning. Let's go ahead and start doing the chunking routine. Now, Ryan and I had to prove that there were yellowfin tuna out here and we're gonna go hard to work on the chunk. The weather window was closing. Here we are, we're starting to get that mid morning and they were talking about two o'clock, the wind's really kicking up from the south, and uh, Ryan's out there throwing chunk baits over, he's fishing a deep rod, and I'm free lining a whole sardine. Scaled down our hook size a little bit to uh, really get it buried in those baits so that the fish had no sight of the hook whatsoever, and uh, that really helped us get the bite there. And I get the, my sardine all the way out, now it's time to retrieve it. I'm just starting to, to wind it in very slowly, and the rod tip bent. As a, I got a tune, I, I wound, try to get that circle hook set, and the rod tip bounced back up. No, so I instantly free spooled, and right there, that line started racing out. You were bringing it in? I was, bringing it in, nice yep. and slow, like you said. Perfect. Oh, pulled hook. Nope. Or is he running towards you? He's running towards us. All right, all right, all right. And you know where the gaffs are. Yep, just keep everything the same. I'm gonna get this in, sure we might thing. be there. And that's uh, 40 pounds, so just 40 be 40 pound leader? Yep. We're gonna make sure that we clear all the lines for this and clear yep. all of the rods off of this side of the boat. That way uh, we don't have any mishaps. Yep, understand. We have everything go smoothly. Not that far out, Ryan. All right, uh, where are the gaffs? Upper right under gunnels, or right upper left for a big one. All right, so we got one on, on the meat, no less. We're trying to get fancy with the uh, irons and the top water plugs. And you brought me up, Ryan. This Beautiful Jersey day, rain, <laughs> a little bit of everything. The good, the good weather seems to follow you here every single time. Jeez. Let me know when you're getting close, George. All right, he's trying to get near the props. Be careful back there. I'm getting you turned right now. Just hold on a second, we're gonna rock All a right. little bit. Give you an idea on the tackle for the Chunkin International 16 pen, 65 pound test up, it's 832 braid but then we played a light leader game to get the bite. So we had the suffix, <laughs> fluorocarbon leader, 40 pound test, VMC, inline circle, hook a four aught, chunk bait, that's your tackle locker. George's Tackle Locker, brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. Choosing the right prop design and pitch is instrumental in dialing in a boat's maximum performance. Given today's high horsepower outboards and larger center console fishing boats, fine tuning has become even more precise. So much so that some prop designs now come in half inch pitch increments versus one inch increments. The basic goal, prop a fully loaded boat to where it jumps on plane impressively and remains within or right near the outboard's maximum RPM range at full throttle. Most of my fishing is offshore where long runs are the norm. Therefore, I desire more of a moderate to quick cruising speed while turning less RPMs. This is easier in the outboards and less fuels burn compared to running a lower pitch that yields stronger hole shots and the same cruising speed, but at higher RPMs. With triple 400 Mercury Verado outboards, my boat already jumps on plane quickly. Fully loaded and quick cruising speeds, I'm averaging around 46 miles per hour at around 4,600 RPMs. And on those calm days, I'll cruise at 50 miles per hour at around 5,000 RPMs. Fully loaded and wide open throttle, the boat hits around 64 miles per hour at around 6,400 RPMs, which are well within the maximum 6,200 through 6,800 factory RPM range of these outboards. I run Mercury Inertia Eco Props 21 inch pitch across the board versus a 19 inch pitch, which is popular on this boat model and power setup. It's all about dialing in a performance curve you desire based on where and even how you fish. Mercury Performance Stats, Brielle, New Jersey. Seas, one to two feet. Power, 
Triple Mercury Verado 400 horsepower outboards. Props, Mercury Inertia Eco 21 inch pitches. Total miles traveled, 120. Consistent cruise, 4,300 RPMs. Speed, 43 miles per hour. Total fuel burned, 117 gallons. We'll be right back. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Never a spectator. Float on. The original aluminum immersible boat trailer. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. So I'm fighting the fish and uh, just enjoying it. This is what we came to Jersey for. And yes, the fishing was challenging, but you know what? We got one fish hooked up. Do you have any color yet? Uh, uh, oh yeah, we got deep color. See him? Yep, barely. You just keep working them. There you go. Actually, I'm gonna I go, I'm gonna have to sneak into that corner. Yeah, go. Wherever. Just keep them coming nice and easy, George. It's a nice yep. fish. Just keep everything the same. One more pass. Yep. Here we go, Ryan. Heads up, heads up, heads up. All right, ready? One, Bring them in. Three. And there we go, George. Yeah, buddy, on the sardine. That whole fight. As soon as it got to the wind on, that's where the fish decided to fight. And fight it did. Huh. I don't know what to tell you, but we got him. Ryan, my man. Ryan, it's a magnificent, huh? Oh, yeah. Yep. They ate the flat line, hey, just hey. like I said. That drive up to Jersey was a royal pain. And I had that. Whoa! Whoa. 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 <laughs> and I had that. A big angle cooler in the back. I'm taking some yellows and back to south. Oh, oh yeah, you are. This fish is protesting. <laughs> <laughs> Easy there. Don't let it catch you in the face. I'm going to try my best not to. Now, you see, you talked about scaling down with light leaders. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, I, I, I know some people like small J hooks you can't see, but when the fish gets it in their throat, they can shape through the lighter leader. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the circle hook, is, you see the <laughs> eyes in the give fish's up. mouth. Yep. You got that right, right there. Right. How many ribs does a, a human have? <laughs> I got about half left. Yeah, right yeah, probably. Taking a beating back there. We're going to get this guy back on the ground. <laughs> oh! Are right, you ready? Yeah, Whoa. I'm ready. Whoa. Put him down. <laughs> Ryan bled the fish, got on the ice, and here we are back to the scenario again. But unfortunately, the wind's coming up and coming up and coming up, and that window's closing. And I uh, looked at Ryan and said, Ryan, you know what? Uh, we got our one yellow fin here in the boat. And I said, uh, it, it, compared to everything else out there, I would say we had a decent day. Yes, it was only one. We didn't run any numbers up, but you know what? We kept the skunk out of the boat in good fashion. So we were about 45 miles out from the uh, Brio Marina and Yacht Club. So we turned to Mark 6 uh, westbound, got on the throttles, and uh, took a, uh, a nice run back. Yeah, so uh, we got back to the dock. Uh, I gave it a little scrub while George was uh, sitting pretty up on the dock with his uh, with his hose. I usually start from the back here, oh, you know, yeah. extra okay. heavy, you know, with the uh, star bright, because yep, I really yep. like a shiny boat. Getting those mercuries nice and Don't look like the one on the end, it gets very jealous. You know, I got, the, I got two more outboards, don't forget those. <laughs> I'm getting there, I'm getting there. <laughs> you know, a, a, a guy can get used to this. All right, Ryan, let me get that for you. If you want to start, inside the boat now. All right. You know, I, I mean, I got to do my part here. <laughs> Very hard work. But I'm certain Joy would want you to kid do this stuff. But uh, we got the star bright down, got the boat cleaned up, and uh, got that fish cleaned up, cut up, ready to go. Growing up, you know, I had always admired George, loved the show. I never in a million years thought that I'd be in the position that I'm in right now. But uh, over the years, all the things that we've done together, whether it be saving him in the event of a snowstorm or speaking at a seminar or now fishing, um, it's been a pleasure knowing George over the years and getting to know him and his crew a little bit better. And um, super excited that you finally made it up this way to uh, get out to the tuna grounds. And I hope we can do it again sometime. And I've got to tell you, watching Ryan from going all the way back 
the Saban, our Saltwater Sportsman Seminar Series in Jersey that day, and watching him just really mature into the serious, really nozzleable angler that he is, was really a good feeling. And they actually take him out aboard the Mark VI in his backyard and let him sort of lead the way out there was really a cool treat. He's a cool kid, hardworking, and you know what? He washes a mean boat too. If you want to keep track of our fishing adventures, we welcome you to follow us on our social media. I'm on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. I'm on Instagram at George Poveromo. And you can see our shows in 4K broadcast quality on YouTube at my YouTube channel, which is George Poveromo TV. Jump aboard and ride along with us.